Hello and welcome back to another guide for Botania. Today we'll go over mana steel, mana weave, how to store mana, and some items you can make now that you are generating mana. So let's hop right into it. To get more flowers on demand, you can use floral fertilizer. To make it, you can either use one bone meal and four dye of a single type, or one bone meal and four floral powder of a single type. Now, to get floral powder, all you have to do is take a mortar and pestle and a paddle and you'll make your floral powder. Put any of these recipes in and you'll get one floral fertilizer. Now, what exactly does this do? So I can take it, just go over to any patch of grass and right click and it will act like bone meal and spawn mystical flowers. What we're gonna do is just go around and just throw it around. Now that you have a mana pool full of mana, there's a few different things you can toss in to make mana versions of. Such as you can toss iron in to make mana steel. You can toss in an ender pearl to make a mana pearl. You can toss a diamond to make a mana diamond. Glass into mana glass. And string into mana infused string. Like iron, mana steel can be turned into mana armor and tools. The armor provides the same defense as iron, and the tools have the same harvest level as iron. But mana steel has higher durability and has a chance of getting better enchantments. To craft them, all you have to do is just make it the same way as any other piece of armor, and this is what the armor looks like. For the tools, instead of sticks, you use living wood twigs, but then again, it is shaped exactly like any other tool or weapon. Another great thing about the mana tool and armors is that when wearing a full set of armor, you, it reduces the cost of items that use mana by 10%. And tools and armor can be healed over time by mana stored in items such as a mana tablet. So, these are pretty solid for, especially for early game, armor and tools. Now, you might be wondering, what's a man tablet and how does it store mana? Well, let's go over that right now. An easy way to store mana early game is with a mana tablet. You can craft it with eight pieces of living rock surrounding either a mana pearl or a mana diamond. This recipe should work with both with either one of these two items. So depending what you have more on hand, use whichever item you want for that. Now, the way you use this is you take one and then let's head over to our mana pool. If I take out my wand of the forest, you can see the little symbols underneath mana pool and the bar of mana. This shows you that if you put a mana tablet in here, the mana will shift from the tablet into the pool. Now if you shift and right click a mana pool, it will switch. So if I take my mana tablet and then I drop it in, you can see that the mana is actually going down and if I hold it, you can see the mana bar decreasing. So if I wait a couple moments, you know what, just to show you, let me take it out and you can see that it is almost halfway full and that there is a color change. So I'll toss it in and let it continue process. So the mana tablet can store mana just by, can draw in mana for you tossing it into a mana pool, but make sure the mana pool is set to export to mana tablets. If I switch it, it will then draw from the tablet into the pool. So this is a nice and kind of simple way to transfer mana from one pool to another early game. It does take time and again, you need to generate the mana. But it is something you can do and now I have a full mana tablet. Another fun little thing about it is that if you go into F5, you can see the mana tablet on your little waist there. So if you're in playing multiplayer, you can actually see the mana tablet on your hip and it will the center will change depending on how much mana you have inside. The more mana, the bluer it gets. The less mana, the more it goes back to kind of the pale white. 
and items that require it, all you need to do is have this in your inventory. And then items that need mana will then use it from it. When you have a mana tablet in your inventory, you can see right above my hotbar that little blue bar. That shows you how much mana you have in your tablet. More full, more full, emptier, it's empty. It's a nice way visually so you don't have to continue quick checking or even have it in your hotbar to see, yo, how much mana do I have? If, for instance, you're trying to build a perfect house and accidentally place glass in the wrong spot, then you can use the vitreous pickaxe. Now, to craft this, you need one mana steel in the top center, two to living wood twigs for handles, and then two glass on either side of the mana steel. What this pickaxe does is it's, pr it's a pretty specialized tool. It is simply silk touch, but only for glass. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm over here for my nice little glass installation of a glass block cube and a glass paint cube. And you know what? Apparently to store them isn't the best to just have them sitting out in the world. So let me dig these up and put these in chests. But as all of you know, a normal pickaxe will break them. But the vitreous pickaxe simply just goes through all of them and I'm able to pick them up. Very simple very easy and it also works for glass panes so no more accidentally placing glass and then realizing whoops I messed that up now I have to go smelt more sand yay everyone's favorite thing so this pickaxe helps fix it and it doesn't have durability for range weaponry you can make the living wood bow and it's made with three man infused string and three living wood twigs just like a normal bow. Now, it doesn't necessarily do more damage, shoot further, or do anything really that special, but it does have a higher durability than a standard bow and can be healed with mana, just like mana steel items. So it is better than a normal bow, so I do recommend making it. To help with building, you can use the World Shaper Sextant. To craft this, you need four mana steel ingots, three across the bottom and one in the top corner, then three living wood twigs around the one in the corner. Now, this is actually a very fun little tool. If I come over here, I can show you exactly what it does. As you hold a right click, it pulls back, and then you get this little visual icon you can see here. If I move my cursor, they make circles. And that's pretty much all it does, is I can pull it back, and if a sheep wouldn't get in the way, I can now make it easier circles. So that might seem kind of weird that has that, but if you're like me and struggle with making circles, it's very helpful. Also, in the little top, you also get a UI of exactly what you need. So it tells me that the radius of this circle is nine blocks, and that to fill out the whole circle, I need 56, but 10 are already filled. And you might be wondering, wait, you didn't put down 10 blocks. Since there's grass here, it's counting them as blocks. So if I go and I break these, you can see it is decreasing. Now, the default for this is cobblestone. But as you can see with the glat with the grass, if I put any block in here, it will read it as filled. So let me go into my inventory and let's pull out uh, let's make about orange glazed terracotta. Why not? So I'll place it in with this block, and as you can see up top, it's actually getting filled in. And then if I want to maybe switch it over to, let's make it out of living rock bricks now. It will still get filled, and another fun thing is where you place this, you actually get a nice outline too. So let's go, oops, let's just finish this out. So if I place this and then I decide to go over here, 
I can still kind of see it through buildings. So that could be a slight annoyance, but then again, normally when I build stuff, I build stuff kind of quick and stop flying. And for the last block, let's make it out of Lapis Lazuli Ore. Come on, come on little kitty. And we're done. See, it's complete. And now we have our little circle. Whoops, misplaced a couple blocks, but it's whatever. So we have our circle all nice and made with beautiful building. Now I, all I gotta do is just follow that pattern up and now I have a nice cylinder. So that is the World Shaper Sextant. It is very helpful if you need help building like normally I do. A useful way to see certain information is with the Manaseer Monocule. To craft it, you need three gold nuggets down the center with one mana steel on the left center and one mana glass in the top corner. Now, this is a bobble. And to equip it, there's two ways. One, you can just simply right click and it's equipped. Or if you go into your inventory, you'll see this symbol in your little guy. Press that, that'll bring up all of your baubles. And then you have your Manaseer monocle in this little charm outfit. Now, baubles do go in specific slots, that's why I can't place it anywhere else. And you can just switch these out depending on what you want at the time. Now, the Manaseer monocle is actually useful for seeing a bit of information. Let's head on over to our flowers over here. So if I want, I can just simply hover over the flowers, these endo flames, and they give me these square ranges. These squares is where I need to drop fuel in order for those specific ones to be powered. So if I drop coal anywhere, coal or charcoal, or anywhere in this kind of square area, this flower will suck it up and use it as power. Also, this shows you the range of where you need to put a mana spreader in order for it to reach. So for instance if I take a flower put it over here it won't get fuel from my dropper or it won't be able to connect to my mana spreader because it is too far. Another fun little thing is that the mana seer monocule can also show you how much power is running through redstone. So I got my daylight contraption here at the source, you can see that it's 12, while at the end it is only 5. And you can see all of the numbers in between. So if you're trying to power something with redstone and want a specific power, or want to see kind of exactly where you want to put uh, repeaters, Manistee's Monocle, very useful. And also, just like the Man Tablet, it adds a nice little cosmetic. If you're wearing a helmet like my, if you have a helmet, part of your skin, like I do, it will show up underneath it. But if you don't, it will just show up right on your face. For quick and easy crafting on the go, the assembly halo is a must have for your inventory. To craft it, you'll need a crafting bench in the center, with a mana pearl up top, and three mana steel ingots around the workbench. And this will give you your assembly halo. Now let me pull out the one I have in my inventory. An important thing to note is that if you're holding it, you'll get this little overlay. And the center will be directed on where you are facing. Now, there's a couple different ways to use it. The first is, as you can see, the crafting table here. So if I right click this, it will open a crafting table. And I can craft whatever I want. So let me take a couple planks here. Boom. Now I have slabs. So. Now I have some slabs that I can now place around in the world as I see fit. And since I'm in creative, I've unlimited these now. But you get the gist. Now there's other things you can do is you can store recipes. So I have stored living wood twig, mana spreader, furnace, and a stone pickaxe. So if I go into my nice handy dandy second inventory, Take some cobblestone, let me get some sticks. But let me also get gold. 
some petals. Some boy, and we'll also pick up some orange. And lastly, living wood. So now that I have all these, I can craft all this stuff in my inventory. So let me make a furnace, make a stone pickaxe, and a couple living wood twigs. And as you can see, in my hotbar, this stuff is crafting. So now I have my furnace. I have my pickaxe to do digging with pickaxe things. But also it has used my living wood to make living wood twigs. And you see the stones missing, sticks are gone. Now, this is all great. And especially because you can store Because you can have 11 saved recipes around here. And to save them, simply use the crafting bench here. Go around to any open one, and as you can see, it has the slab recipe I used before. And since there's no recipe here, I right click, and now it is saved. So if I ever want these on the go, it is easy to do. Now if you shift, right click, it deletes the recipe. So if I don't need slabs anymore, I can remove them and then add a new recipe that I want. Now, these do save exact recipes and that's important because if I come over to my mana spreader, you can see I have the mana spreader recipe with white petals. So let me craft five of these and then let's say I ran out of white petals. I can't craft it even though you can see I have orange petals here and they should work. The assembly halo saves exact recipes. So if you have ones that use different, that can use many different items, such as different types of stones, different types of wood, it will only save the exact ones. So if you have chests in here and you made it with oak wood, you can only use oak wood to make it. That is the one drawback of the assembly halo. So kind of complex recipes like that might not be the best for having here, but if you can use specific recipes such as twigs, I use stone pickaxes a lot, or just anything, you can have it saved into here. If you take four mana infused string, you can make mana weave cloth. This can be used in a number of different recipes. The first one we will go over is Batani's version of wizard robes or the mana weave robes. Each piece is crafted just like any other piece of armor, but using mana weave cloth. The main thing about these is they offer less protection than leather armor as only offering six points. But if you wear a full set, it will reduce mana costs by 35%. So any items that uses mana will now cost 35% less to use it. Also, it will increase the range and power of, cert of all the rods and staffs in Botania that then require mana. So if you want to be a Botania wizard, this set is pretty much you want to go for. And it can be healed over time with mana. So if you compare that, throw a couple enchantments on here, you can have a pretty solid set of armor that you can use with your mana items. If you want a fun way to slightly control the weather, you can make a Terra Terra Bozu. To make this, you need two mana weave cloth and a sunflower, and this will make you your little Terra Terra Bozu. Now, these exist in the world, as you can see here, and they kind of spin around and look happy. What this does is it will shorten bad weather, such as rain, snow, or thunderstorms in your world. And if it is raining, snowing, or thunderstorming, you can give it a sunflower and it will stop. So let me take a sunflower here. Let me go in to the never do. And let me make it thunder. So, oh no, it's raining. It's all sad. And I don't, ooh, that, that, um, okay. So let's do this very quickly. So if I give him a sunflower, the rain stops. So if you're like me, and let me quickly make sure my flowers aren't, aren't on fire. Nope, we're good. If you're like me and find the weather kind of bothersome, just have a little Terra Terra Bozu friend and some sunflowers, and you can just whisk it away whenever, whenever you want, 
or just simply make it shorter. To move large amounts of mana, you can use the mana pool minecart. And to craft it, all it is is a minecart and a mana pool. You can place it on tracks. Is if I just shift it over. Oh, whoops. Let me see if I can get it back. Come on, get back on. There we go. And now it's on the tracks. And it can move like any minecart. This is very useful for transporting mana from one place from one pool to another over longer distances then you know filling up mana tablets running over switching it then doing that back and forth or just having like 50 mana spreaders shooting mana into each other to do this you need a mana pump and we'll go over that in a moment but the mana pool minecart is purely for transferring mana it cannot send receive or infuse items within it and if you break it it will give you an empty mana pool and the minecart. So like I said, not the best for really usefulness, but if you need to transfer mana from maybe about from one base to another, put it on, shift it over, and you can get it all sent, and it can hold a mana pool worth of mana. So it is useful in its own rights, but again, it is very specific. And it is only, again, it is only for transfer, transporting mana it can't do any of the other stuff a normal mana pool can. The mana pump we have, I've just mentioned, is what you need to take from one mana pool into a mana pool minecart. To craft it, you need six living rock on the top and bottom, one bucket in the center, and two mana steel on either side, and this will give you your mana pump, which looks like this. Now let me go over and show you exactly how this works. So since this is a guide, I am slightly cheating. This is a creative mana pool with an infinite mana. So we don't have to worry about keep refilling it. But I have a mana pump here. The arrow faces the mana minecart you want to fill up. And this kind of blue bit and the other one faces the mana pool. So it will look like this. You can turn it off with a redstone and it is always on naturally but it will only pump mana out when it has something to actually pump into. So you have a little mana pool minecart. I'll turn this on, and as you can see, it is pumping mana out. And now it is filled. Now, even though this is creative, this one, this one will decrease, and this one will increase just like anything normal. Also, to quickly show you how you take it out, is if I take this, I'll shift this guy over to here move them in and then it automatically turns on drains all of the mana and now it is back in this pool and if I want I can just push this back around and it will refill now it doesn't lock into place when it is refilling as long as it is in the area and is covered it will fill and it will fill and empty the hovering hourglass is a redstone clock that uses different types of sand to keep time and emit a redstone signal to craft it, you'll need four gold, one in each corner, a mana steel in the center with two redstone on either side, and two mana glass above and below it. There are three different types of sand that it will use to keep time. You can put up to a stack of each type, but you cannot mix them. One sand will give you one second, one red sand will give you ten seconds, and one soul sand will give you one minute, each going up to 64 of their perspective times. Come over to my little dropper here. To power my endo flames, I have a dropper with a hovering hourglass and one red sand. So as you can see, it decreases, flips, and then it will drop a coal powering the flowers into the mana spreader, give me mana. This is the way I have set up, usually for a lot of early mana generations, I have one of these set up, set it to 10 seconds, so it will drop, they'll eat it, and then it'll be shot out. I found this useful. You can use it for larger ones if you have a big large array or if you just want something to help keep time instead of having a million repeaters, comparators, and all that. This can simply just chuck some sand, red sand, or soul sand in it and it'll keep time for minimally as one second, but you can also go all the way up to 64 minutes. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye!